So Marika or Marika Hackman, big sigh. Carl, your selection. Yeah. Well, uh, where to begin with this one? So as we as we kind of mentioned at the top, it was a toss up between Future Islands and this one for me this month. And although she's been around for a long time, it was her 2019 record, Any Human Friend, which I kind of came in on. And then during the lockdown, she had like a great covers record, um, which again, during 2020, it was kind of like a covers record with, you know, stuff, her own version of stuff by Grimes, Radiohead, Elliot Smith, Sharon Von Etten. It was all kind of like, that's what I need <laughs> at this moment in time. Um, and yeah, she did some really good versions of those songs. Um, so yeah, although she's been around for, you know, I think it's a, a decade or so now. Um, yeah, it's the latter projects that I've kind of come to know her on. Um, but even those, you know, you're talking three, four years ago now. So I've kind of forgotten about her. And then the single started come out, come out. She immediately kind of came back on my radar. And, you know, the one that stood out was No Caffeine. Ended up one of my songs of last year. Subsequently, now this year too, um, I still hammer that song. Um, again, similar to Gruff, it's kind of got that apathetic attitude going on in the lyrics, where it's kind of like just had enough of all the all the bullshit going on. Um, but then the you know that's going on in the lyrics, and then musically, it's you know there's really kind of soaring life of it, affirming composition. Uh, to accompany it so yeah just an incredible incredible song um so that was the first single i heard then hanging uh came out shortly after which is just a devastating it's like the hardest breakup song i think you're ever probably going to hear um again it's like got this juxtaposition of like hurt and relief at the center of it um and yeah, just another towering song, like lyrically, it just really kind of punches you in the gut. Um, so yeah, it was, it was those two singles. I was kind of looking at Future Islands and it was kind of, this is what we expect from Future Islands. And then off of those two singles, this one kind of got the, um, got the shout as it were. And I'm pleased to say the other eight tracks, other than those two singles are just as it's outstanding, you know, the ground pulls you in straight away, really enchanting. Sounds almost like the album Waking Up, like the way it kind of gently uh, kind of comes alive right at the start. Um, great use of vocoder on that with the warped vocals. Strings again coming through strong. Just what it, everything you want from an opening song, just beautiful start to the record, grips you in, stops you in your tracks immediately. And then from that point on, I feel like you're kind of locked in. Um, the title track got these great bluesy guitars going on. It sounds like there's a full band playing on it, but the other amazing thing about this record is it's all Marika. Um, other than the horns and the strings, she played everything on this album. So that, that title track where there's no you know, brass or uh, orchestration going on. It is just her as a as a full band, basically, uh, which I think is just incredible and just makes it even more impressive. Um, Blood as well in that first half brings it back down, just a really haunting acoustic track. So you add kind of no caffeine and hanging into that, those three songs, and you've got this, perfect opening five track run for me every single song on that first half is just outstanding um there's then this beautiful kind of piano instrumental that sort of transitions you nicely into the second half it's almost like a little reprieve after all these quite quite heavy lyrics and like big soaring arrangements it kind of gives you that pause in the middle that i think you need at that stage in the record but then in the back end you know vitamins and slime um, which would be a great name for an album now that I think of it, Vitamins and Slime. <laughs> um, but yeah, those two tracks, uh, just some richly layered, uh, you know, textures going on there. 
um that's the thing that kind of stands out actually like how much thought and care has gone into like every single note on this record i think that's what kind of stands out to me the most um please don't be so kind reminds me of the bleaker cousin to nara off uh alt j's second record if you guys know that track um very similar there's a there's a bit where the was it give yourself away refrain comes in um on marika's song and it's got a very sim similar melody melody to that old j track um and then you've got yeah the yellow mile at the end which is quite an understated um very raw way to end the record um it's got like a light-hearted kind of folky outro to it but again lyrically very very brutal once again you know talking about this toxic relationship and it coming to an end and the kind of yeah feelings of anger and relief and of that kind of coming to a close so yeah that's a a good way to end the record so as you can probably tell absolutely adore this album um set a very high bar for the rest of the year for me um you know you, you if you've listened to this pub, you probably know if it's quite melancholic and emo, but then has, you know, uplifting and richly textured music to accompany those dark lyrics, the chances are I'm going to love that album. So, yeah, expertly made and just a stunning listen from start to finish. Yeah, I, I was very, uh, very pleased you chose this from America Hackman, someone who, yeah, I'll, I'll let you go, guys know that. 2017, my first experience going to End of the Road and went with a guy from work who was who had already been and suggested we go. And uh off the basis of that one song from from back then, um, about taking someone's boyfriend. Uh <laughs> so no, not taking someone's boyfriend, taking someone's girlfriend and saying that she wishes uh she was her boyfriend. Um that got me to watch her on the final night of the End of the Road, Sunday night. I I haven't actually checked this out, but I think it was Father John Misty who I uh, I, I decided to miss based on the strength of the my friend's um, kind of hatred of Father John Misty. So I didn't <laughs> even check out myself, which um, I wish I should have. Yeah, hey, I want to talk to this friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he that was so on the basis of that, and uh, and so I went to the tent, uh, the TP tent, instead to watch Marika, and it, the show was okay. And but I really liked that song back at the time, and since then, um, yeah, her last album, um, yeah, I think got quite a bit in the press, but again, just didn't get round to that one. It's quite a, a vivid image on the album where she's holding, I think, a dog and she's topless, basically, um, which is the main thing, main <laughs> touch point since 2017 and, and seeing her headline the TP temp. So then we have this, and um. Yeah, she's grown massively, I think, basically. Because interestingly, I went back to that song, which I loved at the time, and that doesn't hold a candle to, to what's on Big Sigh. And I think actually coming off the back of Ruff Reese's Sadness that Sets Me Free, you've got two very well, well-crafted, well-arranged, uh, chamber-influenced albums here, um, and, and, and certainly two which are very strong picks for this month you went through every song off the album and i was sort of checking against my notes so what can i add to it well uh well no caffeine and and actually the yellow mile you mentioned that it's very bare and understated they're, they're my two favorite the yellow mile sort of calls to mind the shins at, at their most basic acoustic -y. uh no caffeine is as you say, released last year, and then it comes into this year, which always offers a conundrum for us uh, playlist makers. You know, do we add it in both years? But yeah, why not? Uh, and then, yeah, some really quite visceral imagery in her lyrics, which I think was kind of covered in that Guardian article, which I shared with you guys on the the WhatsApp. Um, you know, where we're talking about blood, uh, guts, like all, all, all these kinds of things, which you know are universal to everyone but you know a lot of people don't tend to like to talk about them uh, apart from toddlers i suppose and uh <laughs> yeah she doesn't she doesn't waste much time in sort of really going there you know vitamins 
harsh lyrics. Mum says I'm a waste of skin, a sack of shit and oxygen. <laughs> so it kind of hints at some some motherly issues there as well. Uh, but that but that particular song I sort of noted was a bit like Fleet Foxes, uh, lyrically. Oh, well, not lyrically, but it was like Fleet Foxes. And uh, yeah, nice brass instrumentation. I think The Lonely House, you mentioned that kind of halfway point, this really wonderful piano, which reminded me like something like Amelie, uh, that could easily have gone into that that film, for instance. Blood, I thought, was a little bit like Boy Genius, actually, with <laughs> as a acoustic song uh but but yeah just generally very very strong uh as you say that juxtaposition of beautifully arranged yet visceral hard-hitting lyrics you know slime that reminded me of a nilitha yanya track someone who we've discussed before very big fans of uh carl and i um and then there's so show me round your garden of garden of slime yes uh, you know, I think there's elements of interpretation, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's interesting as well lyrically, and in a very different way to Gruff Reese, and uh, both of both of which I I thoroughly enjoyed this month, and uh, and kindly I know this was your first uh, exploration of of Marika Hackman's music. Yeah, I was uh, really glad Carl nominated this one. I think at the time. No Caffeine was the single that was out. Um, and just, I, I'm with you. One of my favorite songs of last year, going to be one of my favorite songs of this year as well. Between that and this uh, this album cover that it looks like something that would have come out on Saddle Creek Records back in the early 2000s, which I think is a apt comparison to the lyrics that you guys have really gone into here. It, it has that kind of throwback package to it. Um, and yeah, this is a, a perfectly sequenced record. Um, I love that there's the ballads, there's the indie rock, there's a lot of great electronic textures throughout this thing that, um, it's, it's just so diverse yet. So, uh, cohesive. And I think, you know, it, it definitely, um, benefited from being, an early release this year and compared to the, the the paltry selections that were coming out at that time i i spent a lot of time with this record and the thing that i found is that you know 35 minutes is a pretty quick running time but i would uh you know constantly uh the the next song that you know apple music will recommend after the album's over and it just like take me out of it every time because this is such a unique um record she's a unique voice that i would just be right back into it listening again um i i, th I think uh for myself i do i love the back half i think the first half is unstoppable as well but for me uh Slime is just like the song that I cannot um, get enough of. And that would take uh, my my top choice along with uh, No Caffeine and, and Big Psy. But this is a, a perfect record. It's comfortable, but still interesting. Um, and yeah, I mean, great, great nomination, Carl. The, this was a, one I was very happy about all month. Thank you.